Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds or a loved one off their medications and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. We are here for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. It is our mission to help educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about anything to do with health, anything we're talking about here today, formulations, ingredients, skin health issues, our truth treatment products, longevity products for the business. Business, or, of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to comment on anything we're talking about, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, or join me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you're an entrepreneur or entrepreneurially minded and want to generate an income, and help change the world with the power of nutrition, please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and help spread the word about how important a good nutritional supplement program can be and help change lives at the same time. Uh, their number is 866-735-2470. You can also sign up off the websites and purchase products off the websites as well, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, and brightsideben.com and of course you're always encouraged to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, including our Retinol 5% Gel. If you're dealing with aging skin or you don't want to be dealing with aging skin or dark spots or, or acne-prone skin blemishes, uh, Retinol 5%. Retinol is the, the major go-to active ingredient for anti-aging the skin, along with vitamin C. And, of course, in our Retinol 5% Gel, you'll also get a big dose of vitamin C. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, oil, silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. You should not have to pay for ingredients that you're not using. You should not have to pay for ingredients that are only in a product so a company can sell you the product. That is egregious, nasty, and not fair. You'll never have to pay for any ingredients your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so... Wellness is our birthright. Health is our birthright, but we have to understand how the body is structured, how the body is put together. Otherwise, we will fall prey. We will be victim to a medical model, a medical institution that could care less about us as individuals, as all institutions could care less about the individuals that compose those institutions. We've talked about that in the past. Institutions are self-serving. They're designed to perpetuate their own existence. They could care less about us as individuals, but it doesn't matter because we 
care about us as individuals, and certainly I care about us, and I care about you as an individual, and that's why we're talking about the connective tissue. Nothing is more fundamental to the health of the body than the connective tissue, the electrical wiring of the body, the fabric that weaves all our cells, all our structures, all our tissues, all our organs and glands into a coherent whole. The connective tissue is actually an organ. It's technically considered to be an organ. What we call the connective tissue is a, a conduit through which the nourishment and the oxygen and the electricity that we need to thrive flows through our body. And the degree, to the, uh, the, the ease of which this electrical energy and oxygen and nutrition and detoxification flow through the connective tissue is intimately connected to our health. In fact, the ease through which all of these substances flow through the connective tissue is the quintessence. It is the very definition of health. We are electrical beings before we're chemical beings. I know we talk about nutrition. I love chemistry. I am a, a chemistry nerd. Love organic chemistry and biochemistry. Chemistry and certainly the chemistry of nutrition is very, very important when it comes to health, but we are electrical beings primarily. Our electrical nature is the primal nature of the body, and we are electrical before we're chemical. In fact, it is the job of chemistry to facilitate the movement of electricity. That's what vitamins do. That's what minerals do. That's what proteins and carbohydrates and sugars and all of the things we call nutrition really are about movement of electricity. Chemistry moves electricity. If anybody ever asks you what a vitamin does or what a mineral does or what nutrients do, now you have the answer. They facilitate the movement of electricity. They channel electricity into various chemical reactions. That is how nutrients work. They move, they facilitate the movement and the activity of electricity. For us to be well, the electrical nature of the body has to flow with ease, and this is where chemistry and nutrition come in. They, uh, they allow the electricity to flow with ease into the various chemical reactions of the body, and this ease of electrical flow is health. As confusing and as intimidating as the science of chemistry may be, it's actually actually quite simple in the sense that it's all about the movement of electricity. They call it electrons. I don't like saying that because it sounds all sciencey and intimidating. It's just the movement of electricity and this electrical nature of our bodies substands the chemical nature of our bodies. Not that this, this does not marginalize chemistry. This does not make chemistry less important because while electricity is fundamental, it is dependent on chemistry. So without the vitamins, without the minerals, without the nutrients, without the oxygen, the electrical flow will become disrupted. Likewise, in the presence of toxicity. In the presence of toxicity, the electrical flow becomes disrupted, particularly sugar. Sugar disrupts the electrical flow in the body, and this is the problem. A small amount of sugar is important. Obviously, we talked about that before. A small amount is important, but once you get past that threshold, that critical threshold, a small amount, then you go into toxicity, and that toxicity is a function of how it disrupts the electrical flow, the electrical energy in the body. Likewise, cigarette smoke, same idea. Cigarette smoke also disrupts the flow of electrical energy through the body, through the connective tissue. And once the electrical energy is compromised, once the ease of electrical flow is disrupted, health is compromised, and that's where we get dis-ease. Ease means the ease of electrical flow through the connective tissue, dis -ease ease means that flow is disrupted and it's as simple as that. Last program we talked about proprioception. Proprioception, proprioception. it's kind of hard to say but it, it means proprio comes from the Latin for self like proprietary. Perception meaning the sense, proprioception, the sense of oneself. This specifically indicates our ability to move our bodies and its various extensions, our arms and our legs and our hands and our feet and our head and our neck and our, and our trunk, and to move, uh, to move our bodies and to locate it in space. This is a very underappreciated function. Most of us don't even think about it, but if you have Parkinson's disease, you certainly think about it. If you have any kind of movement disorder, you think about it. If you're seasick, you think about it. If you're dizzy, you think about it. 
the connective tissue plays a major role in proprioception. The connective tissue plays a major role in how we locate our bodies and how we move our bodies in space, particularly the abdominal connective tissue, the abdominal fascia, which covers the largest complex of nerves in the body, the so-called solar plexus. I know uh, we talk about the digestive system a lot, but this abdominal fascia and the solar plexus are just as important as the digestive system. In fact, these areas regulate the digestive system. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. will return right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that site up. That is an awesome website, benfuchsarchives.com. It's a compilation of all my different sites. We've got, uh, we also have a, um, a search engine up on benfuchsarchives.com as well as brightsideben.com. Uh, you can search particular programs or topics. If you may have missed a topic or are interested in a topic, they're up at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. You can purchase longevity products off our websites, and of course, you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off of criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, and brightsideben.com. Love to have you on the team. We can build your business. We can help you build your business. I'm going to be in Austin, Texas in a couple of weeks. Um, if you're in Austin, I'll, I'll be announcing where. I, I don't know exactly where I'll be, but it'll be in a couple of weeks in Austin. I love going to Austin. I'll be building uh, a couple of folks, helping build a couple of folks' business businesses in Austin, Texas. And if you're interested in having your business built, I can come out there and we can uh, do presentations. We can talk about the longevity products as well as health and uh, how you can utilize the longevity products for good health. Call 866-735-2470 if you're interested or if you're interested, interested in joining the team, 866-735-2470. You can also sign up at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. Got lines open for you today, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls in the bottom of the hour, continuing on with this idea of proprioception, how the body moves. The connective tissue is extremely important when it comes to this ability that we have or our body's ability to move itself in space, to hold itself straight and strong. These are... Uh, these are functions of the human body that unfortunately we take for granted, but uh, if you have Parkinson's disease or any kind of movement disorder, certainly you do not take this for granted at all. The abdominal area is absolutely, absolutely critical when it comes to how we hold our bodies. The, the, in, uh, in Chinese medicine, they call it the Hara Center, the H-A-R-A Center, or, uh, the Dantin Center, D-A-N-T-E-I-N, I think you spell it, or I-E-N, the Dantin Center, the Hara Center, the Solar Plexus Center, the Abdominal Center. Center. This is the largest complex of nerves in the body. It is the largest complex of connective tissue in the body. The fascia and the relationship to the abdominal fascia, the abdominal nerves, that is the solar plexus nerves, cannot be overstated when it comes to good health. Later on, we're going to talk about uh, abdominal uh, fascia scar tissue and abdominal adhesions. These are super fundamental. Uh, if you have, have a surgical procedure the, uh, that affects the abdomen, uh, the, the likelihood of you dealing with abdominal adhesions is pretty high. Most people are going to have issues with abdominal adhesion, adhesions if they had their belly cut into, abdominal scarring. And we're going to be talking about that uh, in a little bit. But I want to talk about proprioception now and how it relates to the abdominal fascia and what we can do to support our movement skills, to support our proprioceptive skills. Proprio for self, septive for sensing, sensing the self. So the entire fascial system, the entire connective tissue fascial system, which we're learning more and more about every day, which we didn't really re uh, hold in high regard. Well, chiropractors did and, and alternative practitioners did, but modern medicine did not hold the fascia in very high regard until maybe the last 10 or 15 years. 
but the entire fascial system, especially the abdominal fascia, which is connected to the fascia everywhere else, the entire fascial system centered in the abdo abdomen tells us where we are located in space. Our ability to locate ourselves in space is a fascial phenomena, which we take for granted. Our ability to stand up straight, our ability to walk around and not bump into things, our ability to turn our heads, our ability to move our arms and our legs simultaneously. All of these things require a lot of unconscious information processing. Our body is constantly, like a computer, it's constantly running uh, uh, testing and, uh, and uh, analyzing data, just like a computer. If you have Parkinson's or vertigo, or when you come out of anesthesia, or if you're clumsy, or if you're accident prone, it's very likely you have proprioception issues. And as we age, our proprioceptive abilities can become negatively affected. If you want to know what, proprioce what proprioception appears like when it's highly skilled, watch a ballet dancer. Watch a gymnast. Watch those ninja athletes on TV. I forgot what they call them. They have these, these ninja shows. Somebody sent me a Facebook post of this, some gal running this amazing series of, of obstacles, jumping on things and over things and hanging on things. These are all exquisite examples of how finely honed proprioception can be. Proprioception is our ability to adjust our body based on what appears in our environment. And it's all about the fascia. It's all about nerve cells in the fascia. They're called proprioceptors. These are nerve cells in the fascia that communicate to the muscles and instruct the body how to move and instruct the body how to hold itself so that we can navigate our physical world with a certain amount of grace. And we can work on this ability. And we should work on this ability. We can train ourselves to become more proprioceptive, and we should, especially as we age. If you have a movement disorder, please understand you can train yourself to become more sensitive to how your body moves and how your body responds to things in your environment. You can do balancing exercises. You can, do, uh, you can lift weights while you're standing on one leg or standing on a balancing board. You don't even need to lift weights, just standing on a balancing board. You can do exercises. Uh, they have these little balls with uh, uh, little balls with a piece of wood on top of them. These have them in most gyms, and you can do exercises by just standing on these things. Proprioception is affected by drugs and alcohol. The classic proprioception exercise is called the field sobriety test, and hopefully none of you have had one of these things. The field sobriety test is that heel-to-toe walk that the police will make you do if they think you're, uh, you're driving while intoxicated. So if you ever get stopped for DUI, that's a proprioception exercise, the, uh, the field sobriety test. The fascia is a major player. It is the major player in this proprioception process, especially the fascia in the abdomen. Now, it's true that the fascia wraps every one of the billions of nerve cells, maybe trillions of nerve cells that are in our body and crisscross the body, but the most densely concentrated nerves and the most densely concentrated area of fascia is going to be in the abdomen, with the exception of the brain. Brain has more nerves. Well, I don't know, actually. It's pretty close. You may have a brain in your belly. In any case, there's a lot of nerves and there's a lot of fascia in the, in the belly, and this all forms literally a type of brain. We've got a brain in our belly. And by the way, just like all of our experiences and feelings and thoughts and emotions and psychological traumas impact the brain in our head, likewise, experiences and feelings and thoughts and emotions and psychological traumas as well as psychological joys will, in addition to impacting the brain in our cranium, in our skull, they will also affect the brain in our belly as well. And we've all experienced this, or at least we've all talked about this. If you've ever heard the term, uh, I have a knot in my stomach, or you feel something in the pit of your stomach, or you got butterflies in your stomach, this is no mere, th these aren't mere metaphors. These are not just poetic phrases. They are literal manifestations of the belly brain and of the abdominal fascia. That's what a knot in your stomach is, if you've, ever, if you've ever experienced it. It's a sensation, it's electrical flow through the abdominal connective tissue, through the, through the abdominal fascia. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We will be back right after this. back on the break. 
Brief Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here momentarily, so hang on. And we do have lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products or check out our Skin Health blog, please go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And, of course, if you're interest, interested in any of the Longevity products, you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, you can head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. From, uh, from the FDA, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration is ratcheting up its warning about the potential side effects of a commonly prescribed antibiotic called Cipro. The FDA says that the potential side effects of this drug, which is used for urinary tract infections, can cause joint pain, tendon pain, pins and needles, tingling sensation, confusion, and hallucinations. And this is very interesting. Most of us are under the impression that antibiotics are benign. And for many of us, we don't really notice side effects from antibiotics. The most common side effects are going to be related to the digestive system, as antibiotics kill good bacteria in the gut. And this can compromise digestive health, cause diarrhea, cramp bloating, discomfort, which many people, uh, many people have had to deal with. But we don't often recognize that the brain and the neurology are affected by antibiotics as well. Reading from the British Journal of Clinical Pharmacology, this is from uh, 2011, quote, neurotoxic effects associated with antibiotic use. The clini- uh, reading from this article here, uh, the clinical manifestations of antibiotic-induced neurotoxic effects have been reviewed, and this happens with all antibiotics, not just Cipro, even though this uh, latest warning from the FDA covers Cipro. You can have neurotoxic effects from tetracyclines and from, uh, from ke- uh, cephalexins or Keflex, which is the most common of these cephalexin-type drugs. Even penicillin can cause neurotoxic effects, according to the British Journal of Clinical Pharmacology. From the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, heartburn pills in pregnancy may be linked to childhood asthma. Children born to mothers who take heartburn medication, such as Nexium and Prilosec, during pregnancy may have greater risks of developing asthma. This is so important because we are under the impression that these over-the-counter drugs that are so easily and readily available are, like antibiotics, benign. That you can just take them and not have to deal with any toxicity or side effects. And while it's true, most of us aren't going to notice dramatic side effects from our Prilosec or Nexium. If you are pregnant, your baby is being drugged too. The fetus is getting the drugs too, and this is not a good thing. Fetuses are not supposed to have medication. This is not how nature intended it. In fact, nobody is supposed to have medication. Medication is based on the idea of curism, what I call curism, that we cure disease. Folks, diseases are not cured. Doctors hate the word, hate it when somebody says the word cure, and they recognize that you can't cure disease. You're not supposed to say cure. You can go to jail if you tell, if you say you have a product that cures anything. But it doesn't matter because cures aren't relevant. Reversal is. Yes, we know, doctor, that we can't cure cancer. Yes, we know that you can't cure autoimmune disease. Yes, we know that cures aren't possible for the vast majority of our chron- for all our chronic degenerative diseases because they're not really problems. They're signs of problems. They're signs of nutritional deficiencies. They're signs of oxygen issues. They're signs of, uh, of inflammatory issues from a physical perspective. And all of these are reversible. If you have heartburn and you're pregnant and it's miserable, figure out what you're eating. Heartburn is an eating issue. It's a food issue. As most, by the way, most symptoms of chronic degenerative illnesses are related to the foods we eat and how we digest and process our food. Okay, 844-236-6010. Let us go to Kelly in Austin. Good morning, Kelly. How are you doing? Good morning, Ben, and thanks for being you. Thank you. Thank you for being you. What's going on? <laughs> well, my daughter, my lovely Maya, is pregnant. Oh, congratulations. Uh, oh, thank you. I'm really happy. First baby? Um, Are you a, a first-time yeah. grandma? Oh, congratulations. Yeah. That's great. Um, so she's been a, um, a, what do you call it, a vitamin, you know, pregnancy vitamin. I'm not okay. sure how good it is, and I've heard you talk about other things that really help and 
are all prenatals the same? Do you know the good one? No, and they're all minimum wage. They're all minimum wage. You definitely want to be on one because everybody needs at least the minimum wage. And this is true about multiple vitamins in general. They're the basics and everybody needs the basics. But on top of that, she probably needs extra iodine. She probably needs extra zinc. She probably needs extra essential fatty acids and she probably needs extra protein and she probably doesn't need extra sugar. So you want to keep her sugar intake down and make sure her fats and her, uh, and she's getting enough fats and protein and she can tell by her appetite. So is she eating or does she feel like eating? Yeah, she's eating. Good, and good. Bone broth, organic, get her on. Yeah, organic, yes, absolutely. Uh, but, but if she has a digestive issue associated with vegetables, organic isn't going to help. I mean, if she has, for example, if she has some pro a problem with, uh, with eggplant or, or uh, what they call the nightshade vegetables, organic or not, she should stay away from them. If she has any digestive issues associated with gluten or with eggs or with dairy, she needs to stay away from those as well. So look for digestive issues, problems with food, or look for foods that cause digestive issues and eliminate those foods and then support digestive health because as you know if you've listened to this program it's not what we get into our bodies or what we eat as much as what we absorb when it comes to nutrition so she wants to be making sure she's using fermented foods and probiotics and digestive enzymes supporting digestive health with anything she could think of especially particularly if she has a digestive problem uh, liquid nutrients vegetable juices bone soup smoothies these pro these can provide her with dense and copious amounts of nutrition that aren't hard to digest and process and are easy to absorb. So bone soup is ideal. Uh, ca any cartilage, if she's not a vegetarian, any cartilage building nutrients will help her. Glucosamine can help. Uh, chondroitin, of course, the glucogel caps if she's going to supplement. High protein, uh, uh, I don't want to say high, but a good amount of protein, good amount of fat, minimize the sugar and the sweets and, the, and, and any foods that, that she has digestive health issues with as well as adding in the micronutrients, particularly zinc, iodine, and essential fatty acids. And of course, the B-complex and folic acid are important too, but she'll probably get those in her, uh, in, her, uh, in her multivitamin. Folic acid, by the way, is extremely important for babies, for newborn ba or for fetuses uh, and for moms. Uh, and the best place to get your folic acid is not supplementally necessarily, but from vegetables. All those supplements, as I say, will get you the minimum wage, the basics. Is that helpful? Okay, and also, very much. And also, um, because I'm going to have her... Oh, let me there. say one last thing. I'm sorry. Vitamin A. Don't forget vitamin A. Very, very important for, for the growth of the embryo and the fetus. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Great. Okay. Um, and also, I'm going to have her listen to this. So would you please tell her how bad it is to wear one of those wrist, wrist watch computers? Oh, the smartphone? The smartwatches or, or the iWatch or whatever yeah. they call that thing? Um, yeah. You know, there's worse things. It's probably not helpful. Uh, you know, the whole electrical nature of the body is, is, is underappreciated, and there's all kinds of ways we disrupt this electrical flow. But you know what? We're living in, a, in an, uh, we're, we're swimming in an ocean of electrical energy that did not exist 150 years ago. And that's got to have a disruptive effect on our electron, on, on our bioelectronics. Uh, so, yeah, it's probably not a great idea, but there's lots of worse things. That, but that's probably not a good idea. Can I uh, ask well. you one more question? Episode? You know, we got to take a break, so you got to hold on, okay? We'll get you. We'll finish up when we come back because we got a commercial. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We shall return right after this commercial break. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Kelly in Austin. Kelly, you there? I'm here. Okay, so you said uh, there's one more thing you want to ask me? Yeah, one more thing. Um, yeah. My water heater has been out for a while. I'm saving up to get a new one. Okay. And so when it's cold out, the water's really cold. And I heard you talking about one time how coconut oil is good for cleaning your skin or what would be good if I don't have any kind of warm water. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, coconut oil is great. You know, most cleansers have, at least a, uh, now they use a lot of synthetic stuff, but originally most cleansers would would utilize ingredients from coconut oil. Uh, you've heard of sodium lauryl sulfate, by the way? Have you heard of that? Yes. 
Sodium lauryl sulfate is derived from coconut. It used to be derived from coconut. Anytime you see the, the uh, prefix L-A-U-R, like lure, and you'll see that in your shampoo uh, ingredient decks or your cleanser, uh, most cleansers or many cleansers, that w uh, is a, uh, uh, a derivative of something called lauric acid, which is a fatty acid that's found in coconut. So coconut's got tremendous cleaning powers. Uh, and I love, it's also obviously very softening for the skin. You don't get a lot of, a lot of skin nutritional benefits some folks think that they can heal the skin with coconut oil. You may be able to get some nutrition from it. Uh, there's vitamin E in coconut oil, which can be good for the skin. But for the most part, you're not going to get any, any uh, tissue growth benefits from coconut oil. But it's a wonderful cleanser, and it's very kind and gentle to the skin. Also, I like aloe and mixing aloe with coconut oil. Depending on how how uh, dry or how uh, or how oily your skin is, you may want more aloe or more coconut oil. But either coconut oil straight, aloe straight, or a blend of the two. That's that's the way I recommend you clean your skin. It's great for makeup or any grime or dirt. If your skin's too oily, add more aloe. If your skin is too is more dry, you want to add a little bit more coconut oil. Does that make sense? Great. Thank okay. you so much. Good deal. Take care, Kelly. Have a great day. Okay, let's move on to Clint in Chicago. Welcome to the bright side, Clint. Yeah, hi. Uh, hey. I love your show. Thank you. Um, so I'm 59. I had a stent put in about seven years ago, and then just three months ago, I had a quadruple bypass. And oh wow, uh, heart, the heart's strong. The heart's good. I just uh, want to find out how I can make sure that my new plumbing doesn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. And it's interesting how you had a stent seven years ago, and then you had a bypass. The reason is, is because nobody took care of the problem. They just stuck a piece of metal in there, uh, so you could, your blood could flow. Plaque, and, and you probably heard me say this, but I'll say it again, plaques, cholesterol, calcium, build up in the arteries as the arteries break down. It's a compensatory mechanism. The blood is constantly flowing through the arteries, and this creates damage, and what's supposed to happen is the arteries and the cells in, in, in the inner lining of the arteries are supposed to regenerate. But if we're not healthy, that doesn't happen. If we're eating a lot of sugar, that can compound the damage or that can make the damage worse. So what you want to focus on is making sure you're using strategies that build connective tissue. The blood vessels are connective tissue. The blood itself is connective tissue. So you're dealing with a classic case of a connective tissue degradation issue. Your connective tissue is degrading. The body is trying to protect itself by putting fibers and plaque and, and calcium in that area, and that's causing the stenosis. And doctors, well-meaning, if boneheaded, but well-meaning, try to reroute the blood. What you want to be doing is making sure that you're eliminating anything that's just destroying connective tissue. If you're smoking, obviously that's a problem, but you don't, I'm assuming you're not, no. okay? But if you're eating lots of sugar, that can be a problem as well. So making sure you're keeping your, your sugar intake down and making it's sure you're using... Bad. I'm sorry, what? Is fruit sugar just as bad? Yes, just as bad. Just as bad, although fruit has some nutrients in it, obviously. But the good stuff in fruits is in the peel or in the rind. The pulp has much less good stuff and a lot of sugar. So keep your fruit intake down to a minimum. Eat fruits that are have lots of peel and little pulp, like berries. And then uh, also connective tissue building strategies. I cannot emphasize this enough. For the millions and millions of Americans dealing with heart disease, focus on connective tissue. Glucosamine, chondroitin, bone soup, and vitamin connective tissue. I'm going to start calling it vitamin connective tissue, vitamin CT, which is vitamin C. The reason vitamin C is such a powerful panacea and good for almost everything is because it is the rate-limiting nutrient when it comes to generating connective tissue. And I'm going to start calling this stuff vitamin CT, vitamin connective tissue. And you want lots of it, grams of it a day. Um, and then also, of course, all your other nutrients. You don't want to just take vitamin C. Magnesium is important. Calcium is important. Vitamin K is important. Protein is important. And bone broth protein particularly is important. Essential fatty acids are important. All the B complex, but especially niacin and thiamine, vitamins B1 uh, and B3. Vitamin B12 is also important. I mean, there's zillions of different things, but focus on building the body and building connective tissue. That should be the, the core of what you're doing. In addition to electrolytes and electrical nutrients like the B complex, vitamin C and potassium and calcium and magnesium and, and chloride and sodium, you'll get all that in the health 
healthy start pack, throw in the glucogel caps, make sure you're using your ultimate enzymes. Of course, you want to make sure you're absorbing your nutrients too. So anything you can do for digestive health will help also. And make sure you're practicing your deep breathing techniques and relaxing the body. Cortisol and adrenaline, uh, stress hormones will compromise healing, especially post-surgery. So make sure you're practicing relaxation strategies, visualization strategies to, to relax. Slow, deep breathing can be tremendously beneficial. Uh, ultimately, heart disease is about a, a poor oxygenation. So the problem may have started with, with uh, oxygenation issues and, and making sure you're sitting on the couch and uh, uh, five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon, slow, deep breathing in through the nose, out through the nose, making sure you're doing it slowly. This is so important. Make sure you're doing it slowly. The rhythm, the slow rhythm is really what activates the relaxation or parasympathetic nervous system. Good luck with everything. God bless you. Hey, listen, I hope I have. I'm, I'm doing the longevity. Um, I'm doing your bone soup and I'm on paleo. Am I on the right track? You're on the right track, but, uh, but paleo, don't go crazy on the protein uh, because paleo, you know, protein gets turned into sugar. So you got if you're going to go paleo, make sure you're working out a little bit because you want to use that protein. You know, you want to make sure that protein is used for building. Uh, protein gets turned into sugar very, very efficiently. And a lot of folks who go paleo go super high protein, and that's not necessarily a good thing unless you're working out. And yeah, it's always out. also a good idea to make sure you're working out. All right, Clint, I'm going to move on. Thank you so much. God bless you, and good luck with everything. I hope I helped. Uh, Carl, the truth raider, I am so sorry to keep doing this to you, but uh, you got a couple minutes here. Let's, <laughs> let, let me hear. Let me hear your story, Carl. No, no worries, uh, Glenn. Uh, good morning. The third time is the charm. Okay. Well, folks, there in the Denver and Boulder, Colorado area, eat your hearts out. We have a foot of snow on the ground here in the Portland metro area. You do? You got <laughs> yeah. a foot of snow in Portland? That's correct. Yeah. If you wow. Check the, uh, check the news. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's impressive. When was the last yeah. time that happened? Uh, 2008, wow. during Christmas time, we had a bizarre 10-day period of, of snow on and off for, for over 10 days, and it got up to three feet of snow. <laughs> All right. Well, what's going on? we got about a minute so and a half. We're talking about, and this is a continuation, what uh, this strange phenomenon of what I guess what it's going to describe as the death drive. Okay. A bizarre impulse where nothing's going wrong in your life, but then there's some situation that you happen to be in where it's dangerous and deadly, like being out on the road and there's a cliff right right beside the, the highway there, and you have to say, well, what if I turn my, my wheel and, and went off the cliff? I'm so close, you know, to, uh, to uh, tragedy. And in my case, I was in a hotel room where we had an open bay sliding glass door on the ninth floor in my hotel room. And uh, it was just it was bizarre. I don't know what came over me. But I had to fight it with fear. You know, I had to be, you know, I had to hunker down and use my, you know, my governor and my brain there, you know, my, the natural instinct to be able to preserve life mm -hmm. to prevent me from running and jumping out the window. And that's, there was that's the death the drive. Path. Sigmund There's Freud nothing. talked about that. Correct. Thantos and Ethantos, I think, is the death drive and the drive for life. Yeah, so and they're in balance. You, right. And so what I want to get to on this third time trying to make an attempt at this. Yeah. What do you root? What is the root cause? Do you think perhaps maybe it's on the psychiatric side, so maybe go a little bit deeper. But what do you think that might be causing something like that, or in an you impulse know, in a person to do that? Yeah, you know that's an interesting subject. It's not quite nutritional, but it's something I've actually I've actually been reading. I've read about it in the past. That's that's what I was telling you about the imp of the perverse, which Edgar Allan Poe talked about. And it's it's an interesting phenomena where we want to do things that are inappropriate. We want to say things that are inappropriate or do things that are inappropriate, self-destructive impulses like you're talking about. Uh, he talked about it as the imp, imp of the perverse, and there's a reason behind it. And it's kind of, it's a little bit complicated. I don't have time to talk about it right now, but if you Google the imp of the perverse, I-M-P, imp of the perverse, uh, as, uh, as a metaphor for, for uh, doing inappropriate things, you get some interesting ideas. And, and maybe we'll talk about it tomorrow, um, Carl, if you're if you listen tomorrow, I'll, give, I'll just talk, I'll, I'll just touch on it because it's interesting, but it's not necessarily nutritional. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening to the Bright Side, friends. I'm pharmacist Ben. I want to encourage you to check out our Truth 
of skin health products. If you're using skincare now, you really deserve real deal skin health products, and you'll find them at truthtreatments.com. No preservatives, no fragrances, no waters, no wax, no oil, no silicon, just active and functional ingredients, including vitamin C and vitamin A, vitamin C and vitamin A, and it's retinol form, truthtreatments.com. Also, check out our longevity products and the longevity business at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. 